Zoe, this book is called The Expert at the Card Table, and it was written over a hundred years ago by S.W. Erdnase. What do you think about Erdnase? Erdnase sucks. Erdnase sucks? It's just your opinion. Here, play around with those for a little while. Hi, I'm Jason England. Welcome to Expose. Hey guys, it's time for the news, and then I gotta go head out to Las Vegas for literally no other reason than it's awesome out there. First up, on Tuesday, two magicians appeared, well not really appeared, on America's Got Talent. Uh, David and Lehman wowed the judges by rendering Howie Mandel unable to speak the secret method. Actually, Howie Mandel's illiterate. I just, just made that up. How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read? But they did wow the judges and made it to the next round, so congratulations. I don't know what this was. It's my moving to the next round. Another magician, Mad Jack. If you if you say Mad Jack fast, sounds like magic. Mad magic, Mad Jack. That was really entertaining for me for a good hour and a half straight. It's pretty solid. Uh, magic Jack so elegantly uh, select made a selected card vanish and appear in his butt. I never thought I would see the day, but I did. And I don't know, I don't know how to feel about it. He did not make it to the next round. It, it appeared in his, in his butt, so, I, so I've heard. It's pretty disgusting. Adam Trent will be performing tonight, Friday, June 6th at the Strand Theater in Shreveport, Louisiana. Gosh, that that's, if, if you know what that is, then you should be there and you should see it. Awesome. Last but not least, there are seven new releases on The Wire this week, from Cardistry to Mentalism, uh, even Magic with Socks. Yes, Magic with Socks. Just sounds so awesome. I don't know why we didn't think of that before. So definitely go over to The Wire and check those out. That's all for me this week. Last Friday, you actually submitted over 250 questions for Jason England, and this week, he's back with answers. So take it away, Jason. We're all super excited to see what you have to say. I'm gonna go to Vegas. You, you can, we can stop this for now. We can. So our first question comes from LK Magic, and the question is, do I have a favorite pass or shift? Well, first of all, I don't really make a distinction between those two terms, so you might hear me say pass one day and shift the next day. Um, basically, they're all the same thing to me. Uh, anytime you're talking about transposing two halves, you're talking about a pass or a shift. Uh, as far as the actual question, do I have a favorite? Um, I do not have a favorite. However, I do think that classic passes, and that whole family of classic passes, including dribble passes and riffle passes and jiggle passes and things of that nature, that I think those are more versatile than, say, Hofsen's or Herman style passes or turnover passes. Um, it's not to say that the Herman and Hofsinger style passes aren't great. They are great, and I use them a lot. But if you told me I had to throw out all the passes that I've fooled around with over the years and just keep one, it would be some type of classic pass, you can bet. Uh, I just believe that they're more versatile. You can use them in more situations than the other passes. So that's the answer to that. So the next question comes from Nick Stumphauser, and the question is, do I feel constrained by being single-faceted uh, since I basically only perform with a deck of cards? Well, first of all, I don't only perform with a deck of cards, but it's true that the vast majority of what I do is with a deck of playing cards. But to answer the question, no, I don't feel constrained. Um, I don't feel that I'm single-faceted just because the instrument that I choose happens to be a deck of playing cards, any more than Jimi Hendrix felt single-faceted since he only played guitar, um, or that Pablo Picasso was primarily a painter, and so does that make him single-faceted? Oh, of course not. Um, the truth is, is that you can express yourself with any instrument, whether that instrument is a literal instrument, like a musical instrument, or whether that instrument of expression is painting or sculpture or writing or whatever you want. So the fact that I only, for the most part, use a deck of cards, I don't think uh, means I'm single-faceted at all, and it certainly doesn't constrain me, and it shouldn't constrain you either. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so the next question comes from Adler Davidson. And the question is, what is my opinion on scripting a magic show versus improvising or ad-libbing? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about improvising or ad-libbing ad -libbing the presentation. And my advice is that the more you script it, the better it's going to sound. Um, scripting is just sort of mapping out what you're going to say. And 
It can take the form of something as simple as an outline, which would be a form of a script, not much of a script, but a form of a script. Or you can take it all the way to every single word, every single beat written down in a proper script. And I think what you do sort of depends on the type of show you're doing. If it's an informal show for a couple of friends and you want to try out a, a new piece that you've never done in front of a live audience before, then I think it's okay to probably uh, begin with an outline and try to find your words in a performance like that uh, where there's not a lot of pressure on you. In a formal performance where people are paid to come see you or if you are uh, actually been hired to perform for a group of people, I wouldn't do that at all. I would stick with something that was thoroughly scripted and rehearsed many, many times so that you know exactly what you're going to say, when you're going to say it, and why you're going to say it. So the last question comes from Kyler Hudson, and the question was, can I show you something unconventional with a deck of cards? Well, I'll certainly give it a, a good shot. So uh, here I have a deck of plastic cards. They're the kind of cards they use in casino poker rooms. And for those of you that don't know, they will not hold a crimp, okay? So we'll give these cards a couple of shuffles here. A couple more shuffles. One more shuffle. And one last shuffle and a little bit of a stripping action there. Let's see what we can do here. What do you know? I'll be four aces. Not too shabby. Hope that was unconventional enough for you. So that's it for this week. Next week, we want you to submit all of your questions in yes or no format. In other words, I only answer questions that can be answered with a simple yes or a no. And by doing that, we hope to get through as many questions as possible in the time frame that we have. So I'll see you guys here next week. Thanks for watching.